We've now set the stage for the discovery of the most important fundamental theorem about impartial games. Along the way, this segment will also help you discover the binary numbers if you're not already familiar with them. These discoveries will emerge from our efforts to find a tractable explanation of the Grundy numbers in the Rooks table. As often in mathematics, we begin by looking for patterns or asking questions which might help us find them. Here's our first question. How large can a Grundy number in this table be? Recalling earlier videos in this series, we've seen that none of our king's Grundy numbers could exceed three because the king has at most three legal moves. And none of our knight's Grundy numbers can exceed four because the knight has at most four legal moves. From the location whose coordinates are x and y, our rook has x horizontal moves and y vertical moves, so its Grundy number cannot exceed x plus y. Where is this bound attained? Let's highlight all those locations in yellow. When we were using Grundy's minimal excludent formula to compute the values in the Rook's Grundy table, we used dark black vertical lines whenever the set of x numbers to the west of the line was identical to the set of non negative integers less than x. If we reflect these across the diagonal, we find a symmetric set of horizontal lines. Let's now show both those darkened lines and the yellow locations together. Some of the darkened horizontal lines and vertical lines meet to form a square. Let's eliminate all of the other dark lines. The sides of these squares are 1, 2, 4, etc. These are 1, 2, 2 squared, 2 cubed, etc. Let's put those numbers at their appropriate places along the x and y axes. We might also notice that the 4x4 four four square in the northeast corner of the 8x8 eight eight square is identical to the 4x4 four four square in its southwest corner. The sizes of all these patterns are associated with the powers of 2. This suggests that we might try using binary representations for the x and y indices. Just as the decimal representation of an integer expresses it as a sum of powers of 10, namely ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, etc., so the binary representation expresses that integer as a sum of the powers of 2. The powers of 2 shown here are 2 to the 0th power, which is 1, then 2 to the 1st power, which is 2, then 2 to the 2nd power, which is 2 squared, or 2 times 2, which is 4, and finally, 2 to the 3rd power, which is 2 cubed, which is 8. The number 1 is 2 to the 0. The number 2 is 2 to the 1 plus no additional 1s. The number 3 is the sum of 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 0. The number 4 is the sum of 1, 4 plus no 2s and no 1s. The number 5 is the sum of 1, 4, no 2s, but a 1. The number 6 is the sum of a 4, a 2, but no ones, etc. Conventional addition of integers in the binary representation is very similar to addition in the decimal representation. In this particular example, the sum of two ones in the eights column gives a carryover into the sixteens column. So the sum is 16 plus 2 plus 1, which is 19. As in decimal notation, leading zeros can either be inserted or omitted, so they are irrelevant. 
here are the first 11 binary integers in ascending order going downward. Let's turn it upside down so the binary numbers now ascend upwards. Let's shrink the type font of those numbers to make them the indices of the board's vertical y-axis. We'll omit the indices of rows above the top of the portion of the board we're showing. Let's also use the binary numbers as indices along the horizontal x-axis at the bottom of the board. Let's again consider the squares of sizes 1, 2, 4, and 8. What distinguishes these red boxes? Aha! The red boxes are those in which all of the X, Y, and R inside them have the same maximum number of bits in their binary expansions. For example, every row and every column in the 8x8 box contains some permutation of the 3 bit integers, which run from 0 through 7. Here's the next provocative question. What distinguishes those locations highlighted in yellow, where R is the sum of its coordinates, X and Y? As a specific example, this location has X equals 10, Y equals 5, and the Grundy number of 15. If we look at several such cases in binary, we can discover the answer. Aha! The values in yellow are those in which no carries occur in the binary addition of X and Y. Can we now see how R depends on its coordinates at other locations? As another specific example, when the rook is at X equals 10 and Y equals 9, its Grundy number is 3. Let's look at this triplet of numbers in binary. Instead of the conventional sum, the Grundy number differs because it comes from a circled form of addition which ignores the carries. We'll now denote this operation by an encircled plus sign. In logic and digital engineering, this operation is called the exclusive OR, abbreviated as XOR. In combinatorial game theory, it is sometimes called the NIM sum. Since this operation has no carries, every column is independent. This special case provides an example of each of the four possible cases. The XOR of 0 and 1 is 1. The XOR of 1 and 0 is also 1. The XOR of 0 and 0 is 0. And finally, the XOR of 1 and 1 is also 0. That is the only one of the four cases in which the XOR differs from conventional addition because conventional addition includes a carry but the XOR does not. As always, leading zeros don't matter. This result is known as Boughton's theorem. Before attempting to prove it, you might want to look at more locations of the Rooks-Grundy table and verify that it works.